Hello everyone, welcome to AMG Cloud. This is the session 3 where we are going to practice the questions from 11 to 20. So this is the AWS uh, Solutions Architect session. Okay, so yes, let us begin. Question 11. The development team at a retail company wants to optimize the cost of EC2 instances. The team wants to move certain nightly batch jobs to spot instances. The team has hired you as the solutions architect to provide the initial guidance. Which of the following would you identify as correct regarding the capabilities of spot instances? You have to select three options. Okay. Let us see the options. First option, when you can, uh, when you cancel an active spot request, it does not terminate the associated instance. Second option, spot blocks are designed to be interrupted just like a spot instance. Third option, if a spot request is persistent, then it is opened again after your spot instance is interrupted. Fourth option, spot blocks are designed not to be interrupted. Fifth option, if a spot request is persistent, then it is opened again after you stop, uh, stop the spot instance. Okay, so yes, analyze the answer, find out the correct answer. Okay, the correct answers are option one, when you cancel an active spot request, it does not terminate the associated instance. Option three, if a spot request is persistent, then it is opened again after you spot instance is interrupted option four spot blocks are designed not to be interrupted these three are the correct options okay next question question number 12 your firm has implemented a multi-tiered networking structure within the vpc with two public and two private subnets the public subnets are used to deploy the application load balancers while the two private subnets are used to deploy the application on amazon ec2 instances the development team wants the ec2 instances to have access to the internet the solution has to be fully managed by the aws and needs to work over ipv4 what will you recommend so first option internet gateways deployed in your private subnet second option nat instances deployed in your public subnet option three egress only internet gateways deployed in your private subnet and uh, fourth option nat gateways deployed in your public subnet okay so guess the answer the correct answer is option four nat gateways deployed in your public subnet okay Question number 13. The DevOps team at a major financial services company uses multi-availability zone, multi-AZ uh, deployment for its MISQL RDS database in order to automate its database replication and augment data durability. The DevOps team has scheduled a maintenance window for a database engine level upgrade for the coming weekend. Which of the following is the correct outcome during the maintenance window? So your options are option one, any database engine level upgrade for an RDS DB instance with multi as deployment triggers the primary DB instance to be upgraded, which is then followed by the upgrade of the standby DB instance. This does not cause any downtime for the duration of the upgrade. Second option, any database engine, mul engine level upgrade for an RDS data, uh, DB instance with multi as deployment triggers both the primary and standby DB instances to be upgraded at the same time. However, this does not cause any downtime until the upgrade is complete. Option three, any database engine level upgrade for an RDS DB instance with multi-AZ deployment triggers the standby DB instance to be upgraded, which is then followed by the upgrade of the primary DB instance. This does not cause any downtime for the uh, duration of the upgrade. Fourth option, any database engine level upgrade for an RDS DB instance with multi AZ deployment triggers both the primary and standby DB instances to be upgraded at the same time. This causes downtime until the upgrade is complete. Okay, so the options are quite huge. You can take some more time if you want. I'll just scroll up to uh, so that you can review the question. Okay, so the correct answer is option number three. Any database engine level upgrade for an RDS DB instance with multi AZ deployment triggers the standby DB instance to be upgraded, which is then followed by the upgrade of the primary DB instance. This does not cause any downtime for the duration of the upgrade. 
this is the correct answer okay now question number 14 a microsoft windows files uh, server farm uses distributed file system replica uh, replication which is dfsr to synchronize data in an on premises environment the infrastructure has been migrated to the aws cloud which service should the solutions architect use to replace the file server farm so your four options amazon efs amazon ebs aws storage gateway and amazon fsx so guess the answer the correct answer is option for amazon fsx okay question 15 a company is deploying an amazon elastic cache for redis cluster to enhance security a password should be required to access the database what should the solutions architect use vpc security group aws directory service Redis auth command, AWS IAM policy, which one? So guess the answer. The correct answer is option 3, Redis auth command. Okay. Question 16. A customer runs an application on premise that stores large media files. The data is mounted to different servers using either the SMB or NFS protocols. The customer is having issues with scaling the storage infrastructure on premise and is looking for a way to offload the data set into the cl uh, cloud whilst retaining a local cache for frequently accessed content. Okay. Now, which of the following is the best solution? Establish a VPN and use the Elastic file system. Use the AWS storage gateway file gateway. Use the AWS storage gateway volume gateway in cached volume mode. Or create a script that migrates infrequently used data to S3 using multi-part upload. Which one is the correct answer? The correct answer is option to use the AWS storage gateway file gateway. Okay. Now question 17, a solutions architect has deployed an API using Amazon API gateway and created usage plans and API keys for several customers. Requests from one particular customer has been excessive and the solutions architect needs to limit the rate of requests. Other customers should not be affected. How should the solutions architect proceed? Configure the per method throttling limits, configure a server side throttling limit, configure per client throttling limits and configure the account level throttling limits. Which one is the correct answer? Actually, the correct answer is option three, configure per client throttling limits. All right. Question 18, an application running in an on-premise data center writes data to a MySQL database. A solutions architect is re-architecting the application and plans to move the database layer into the AWS cloud on Amazon RDS. The application layer will run in an on-premise data center. What must be done to connect the application to the RDS database via the internet? You have to choose two options. Option 1, select a public IP within the DB subnet group to assign to the RDS instance. Option 2, create a security group allowing access from the on-premise public IP to the RDS instance and assign to the RDS instance. Option 3, configure a NAT gateway and attach the RDS database. Option 4, choose to make the RDS instance publicly accessible and place it in a public subnet. Option 5, create a DB subnet group that is publicly accessible. Now guess the answer. Okay, the correct answers are option to create a security group allowing access from the on-premise public IP to the RDS instance and assign to the RDS instance. And option 4, choose to make the RDS instance publicly accessible and place it in a public subnet. Okay, question 19. A large quantity of data is stored on a NAS device on premises and accessed using the SMB protocol. The company requires a managed service for hosting the file system and a tool to automate the migration. Which actions should a solutions architect take? Option 1. Migrate the data to Amazon FSx for Luster using AWS Data Sync. Option 2. Migrate the data to Amazon EFS using the AWS Server Migration Service. 
Option 3. Migrate the data to Amazon FSX for Windows File Server using AWS Data Sync. Option 4. Migrate the data to Amazon S3 using AWS Snowball Edge device. Okay, so guess the answer. The correct answer is option 3. Migrate the data to Amazon FSX for Windows File Server using AWS Data Sync. Okay, now question 20, our last question of this session. A development team needs to run up a few lab servers on a weekend for a new project. The servers will need to run uninterrupted for a few hours. Which EC2 pricing option would be the most suitable? Option 1 on demand, option 2 spot, option 3 reserved, option 4 dedicated instances. So give it a go. Okay, the correct answer is option 1 on demand. Okay. Okay, so this is how we end today's video. Hope you liked the session. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. If you haven't visited our playlist of 1000 AWS Cloud Practitioner questions, please do go and visit it. Hope you're going to enjoy that also. And stay tuned for more videos on AWS Solutions Architect. Comment your score down below and if you have any doubts, please don't hesitate to ask. That's all I wanted to say. Take care, stay safe, stay happy and bye.